Another people of color mentioned in the Bible are the people of Sarin, capital C, Y R E N E, capital C Y R E N E. The people of Sarin were African people who lived in what is now Libya, situated on the Mediterranean coast of northern Africa. Sarin was the chief city of the region known then as Serenica, the nation that bordered Egypt on the west. Serene itself lay about 450 miles, that's 720 km west of Alexandria, Egypt. As we learn in part one, Egypt, even though northern Africa is often considered Arab today, there were no Arab peoples anywhere in northern Africa in Bible times, Old Testament or New Testament. Only Africans, Arab peoples did not move into Africa until the 7th to the 10th centuries AD, about 600, 1,000 years after the Bible was finished. Serene is the African country where Simon of Serene came from that blessed brother who helped the Lord Jesus bear his cross up to Mount Calvary. Matthew 27, verse 32. Simon and his people were descendants of Put, of Put, the third son of Ham, the ancestral father of Africans. Ham was Noah's youngest son. See Genesis 8, verse 19, Genesis 10, verses 1 through 20. Mark who wrote the Gospel of Mark, was also a man of Serene, a North Africa Jew like Simon of Serene. Mark was a disciple of Peter, one of Jesus' three closest apostles, the apostles who made the blessed confession, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, Matthew 16, verse 16, to whom the Savior and Lord Jesus Christ gave the keys to the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 16, verse 19. His gospel, the gospel of Mark, is believed by Bible scholars to have been the first gospel written. It was written about 50 A.D. The Acts of Mark, a book written by a churchman around the 4th or 5th century, about 200 to 300 years after Mark died says St. Mark was a Cyrenian Jew, that Mark first preached the gospel in Cyrene to his own people in northern Africa around Libya. This is a very important area where our Bible teachers, our Bible schools, and our Bible seminaries are being imbalanced and therefore not telling the whole truth. They openly teach and preach that Luke was a Greek, but they never mention that Mark was an African. God expects and requires that all of his people be recognized and openly acknowledged. As Romans 2 verse 11 says, For there is no respect of persons with God, no bias for or against anyone, but God knows. The early church knew, and now we know more about this apostle whom God used first to preach to Serenians the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. To the east, of Serene, the Coptic Church in Northern Africa, Egypt, and Ethiopia traces its very origin back to this same St. Mark who brought the gospel into the area too. As the Coptic liturgy says, be glad and rejoice, O Egypt, and her sons and all her borders, for there had come to thee the Lord of man. This is interesting History, certainly, but that is not all that it is. Mark's establishing the Coptic church in Egypt and Ethiopia also fulfills Old Testament prophecies. Isaiah 19, verses 21 through 25. And the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Lord, and perform it. And the Lord shall smite Egypt. He shall smite 
and heal it, and they shall return even to the Lord. And he shall be entreated of them and shall heal them. And that day shall there be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt, and the Egyptian into Assyria. And the Egyptians shall serve with the Assyrians. In that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of the land, whom the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, and Assyria, the work of my hands, and Israel, mine inheritance. Psalm 68, verse 31. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. So Mark, an African Jew, became a disciple of Peter, one of Jesus' inner circle apostles, Peter, John, James. This same Mark was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write a gospel of the Bible, then sent by God into the mission field back to Egypt, the same part of Africa where the Lord Jesus himself lived when he fled as a baby with his family from the wicked King Herod, Matthew 2, verses 13 through 15, right back to Egypt, establishing that church's headquarters in Alexandria, right on the Nile River. So Egypt, the African country God chose to take care of Jesus when he was a baby, received the blessed gift of the gospel from the mouth of one who learned it from Peter himself, who received the keys to the kingdom of heaven from Jesus Christ himself. And as an added blessing, God even used the Coptic church to fulfill the prophecies he gave in the old Testament about bringing Egypt to himself and making this African nation one of his people. As Job 9 verse 10 says, the Lord doeth great things past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. But there's more. In the early church, three churches were the most influential and the most highly regarded. There was Jerusalem. God's chosen city, where James, half-brother of Jesus Christ, Jesus had no human father, being the son of God, Luke 1, verse 35. Author of the epistle of James had been bishop. There was Rome, founded by both Peter and Paul, and there was Alexandria, chief city of the Coptic church, which Mark founded. The Coptic church survived tremendous persecution many times through the centuries, many attempts to erase the name of Jesus Christ from Africa and the rest of the known world at that time. Just by surviving through all of that, the Coptic church won over its adversaries. In fact, it prospered and grew and overcame, fulfilling Jesus' prophecy. Upon this rock will I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. How absolutely true Jesus is. How reliable his Bible is. The Coptic church has lasted in northern Africa for 2,000 years. The church survived persecutions of Roman emperors, the Muslim Congress, and many other attacks. So the question God has for us right now is, are you a person of color today? If so, which color? Are you black? Are you white? Are you brown? Or another color? More important, are you red? Are you covered with the precious blood of Jesus? Am I? Have we accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, believing that he loved us so very, very much that he died for us and his rising physically from the dead is the only hope for forgiveness, the only salvation from eternal condemnation in hell and the coming judgment. If we've accepted him, are we giving him our all? Are we doing our best for him? Are we telling others about him? On judgment day, when we stand before him to give an account for our lives, will he smile and say, 
well done, thou good and faithful servant, or get away from me. I never knew you. There are many people of color that God used in the Bible. There are many people of color that God is using today. If we really look at it, we are all people of some color. Let's make sure it's the right color. However we look on the inside, on the inside, let's be sure our souls are red, covered by the blood of Jesus through faith in him with our sins forgiven. Because whatever we are right here, right now, and eternity is far better to be a person of color, to be red, washed in the precious blood of Jesus than to be anything else. There are recommended readings. Peter Brown, Augustine of Hippo, University of California Press, 1995. You can also read Peter Connolly, Living in the Time of Jesus, capital S-T-E-I-M-A-T-Z-K-Y-L-T-D, Stemotsky, Israel, 1988-1999. Timothy Ware, The Orthodox Church, Penguin Books, out 1963. I'll just leave it uh, copy and paste for your information. Reverend Robert Ash, is the, is, uh, this is his article. I give thanks unto your almighty El Shaddai for giving us history and revealing to us things that we did not know. Hallelujah. May he bless you with continued knowledge and searching for what has been hidden so that it will be revealed. In his son's name.